Hey everyone, and welcome to our Shadowlands Melee tier list update. This tier list has been put together using a process in which we take time to gather insight from multiple rank 1 and tournament competitors, in addition to thoroughly analyzing patch notes, beta gameplay, and performance to give you the most accurate and up-to-date tier lists possible. As this tier list was produced using the latest beta patch, this means a lot of what you see may be subject to change. What this tier list will offer though is a first look at what's doing well and why when it comes to PvP. We'll continue to strive to keep these updated as needed throughout the beta before then releasing a solidified version once Shadowlands is released and Season 1 commences. Before we get started though, if you're as excited for Shadowlands as we here at Skillcapped are, then be sure to drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more up-to-date Shadowlands content. For this tier list, we'll be placing our melee specs into four tiers. C, our lowest tier, ranging up to S, where we'll have the best of the best. On screen now, you'll see a quick refresher of how our melee tier list shaped up in its last rendition. Well, since then, there have been a few buffs and nerfs, as well as the meta has gone on to further establish, with players figuring out the best builds and compositions for their spec. So, without any further delay, let's kick things off with our lowest tier. First of all, we've still got Fury Warriors. Fury Warriors are yet to receive anything positive in the way of buffs or changes for PvP as of yet. The spec is still being heavily outshined by its arms counterpart, and is lacking a lot of the utility, sustained damage, and of course, most importantly, a mortal strike effect. Despite some small buffs to single-minded Fury and other abilities, it still seems that Titan's Grip is the way to go. But with the removal of Thirst of Battle, Fury is left being in an even weaker state than they were in BFA. This is really sad for a spec that has been at the bottom of our tier lists for some time now. Speaking of specs that are familiar with the bottom of tier lists, we've got a Fury Warrior's best friends, Enhancement Shamans. These two have sadly been at the bottom of tier lists for the entirety of BFA, and that's not looking to change in Shadowlands. Our melee shaman friends have undergone a mini rework, getting back their old mechanic of Maelstrom Weapon. Despite this and many new cool additions such as the return of Wind Fury Totem, Enhancement's core issues revolve around its incredibly weak survivability. With the meta looking to be extremely bursty and favoring high damage melee such as Sub Rogue and Windwalker Monks, Enhancement sadly struggles to go toe to toe with a lot of the other melee. With that being said though, if Enhance gets some defensive buffs, they definitely have the damage to shoot up on our list. So, one to watch for sure. Next, moving up into our B tier, we've got our first change, and that's Demon Hunters, who have climbed up one tier. Now, I know what you're thinking here, but don't worry. Demon Hunters are still not anywhere near their level of strength from BFA. The reason for them climbing up one tier is no direct buffs, but just players figuring out the best covenant and talent choices to make the class a little more viable. As we know, Demon Hunters were lacking a lot in the damage and defensive departments. Well, to combat this, top players have been making up for this with defensive soulbind and conduit choices. At first, this won't be as noticeable, but once we progress further into the expansion, Demon Hunters will, in our opinion, gain a lot of their strength back. In terms of their damage, players have found out that picking up Unbound Chaos and utilizing it to burst has netted the best results. So while they're not the Demon Hunters that you more than likely have nightmares about from BFA, everybody's favorite melee class warrants moving up just one tier for now. Next up, still remaining inside of our B tier, we've got Rep Paladins. Now I know what you're thinking already, yes, we know that Execution Sentence does way too much damage. Well, this cheese one shot is really all Rep Paladins have going for them right now. And if you're clever and play around it, the spec is left feeling extremely lackluster, lacking as always in mobility and the ability to slow targets down. While they do have strong off feeling and utility, it isn't enough to make up for their lack of damage outside of Wing's execution sentence. We must say though, the design of Rep Paladin continues to make it a spec that performs better the lower rating you're at. Although it may perform well at ratings where people don't respect cooldowns, at high levels, it's a different story, and Rhett sadly cannot contend with the stronger specs and compositions. Also still remaining inside of our B tier, we've got Outlaw Rogues. Outlaw is usually either hit or miss, having its moments in previous expansions, but only for short periods. Outlaw's major issues have always been its lack of damage, mortal strike, and how reliant it generally has been on RNG. Well, Shadowlands has done a nice job in masking over a lot of these weaknesses, with new additions like Poisons bringing a mortal strike, more reliant re-rolling from the Roll the Bones, and the legendary Guile Charm giving a pseudo red buff for those of you that remember the old red buff killing spree days of Combat Rogue. Despite these 
changes though, Outlaw is still set to be heavily outshined by both Sub on the Control and Burst front and Assassination on the Sustained Damage front, leaving Outlaw without any real place in the metagame despite its unique and fun design. That being said though, I can still see Outlaw being played in a few niche comps by those players that thoroughly enjoy the spec, so don't walk the plank on Outlaw just yet. Alright then everyone, that's going to wrap up our bottom two tiers. Before we jump into our pen ultimate tier, if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Okay then, so moving on to our A tier, our first edition shadow stepping in is going to be Assassination Rogues, up one tier from our last list. We had Assassination previously inside of our B tier due to them just being heavily outshined by sub. There was literally no reason to ever play Assassination. Well, with both nerfs to sub and buffs to Assassination, the gap has been brought a little closer. Assassination saw some big energy buffs to make up for the low levels of haste, to both Slice and Dice and also Venom Rush, alongside buffs to their preferred legendary Doomblade. This has resulted in Assassination doing very high consistent pressure, lending itself nicely to compositions built around high damage, such as when paired up with Affliction Warlocks or even Shadow Priests. While we still think that Sub is without a doubt much better, there will be cases where Assassination may be preferred, and if we do see any more changes to Sub, it's likely that Assassination might take over. Also pouncing up two tiers, we've got Feral Druids. Despite them getting tons of great new additions, we placed Ferals initially quite low, purely based Based off of their damage output feeling incredibly lackluster after losing a lot of borrowed power. Well, with players adapting around this and focusing more on a purely burst build to buff the damage of Ferocious Bite means Ferals are capable of some insane burst, especially now with the buffed Ferocious Wound. Defensive-wise and utility-wise, Ferals are looking great, being very durable inside of bear form and also now having Barkskin and Cyclone added baseline into their kit. Feral is also capable of some ridiculous off-healing with the correct talents. Overall, strong healing, great burst with Ferocious Bite, and being incredibly durable has bolstered Feral up two tiers from our previously low end ranking. Our A tier has seen the most changes so far, and to further add to that, we've got Survival harpooning up one tier as well. Our initial ranking for Survival was on the low end due to lack of representation. I mean, come on, why play Survival when you can play Marksman right now? Overall though, Survival is looking pretty much the same, just with some very strong new tools such as Purge from Trank Shot and extra finishing power from Kill Shot. What Survival does better than Marksman though is its ability to kite and peel melee with the use of abilities like Steel Trap, Tracker's Net, and Sticky Tar. With the meta shaping up to be built for the most part around strong melee classes, Survival is a great pick to counter the meta and performs exceptionally well in compositions like Hunter Shadow Priest or Hunter Sub Rogue, and if we see nerfs to Marksman as expected, Survival could end up being the go-to spec just for its utility. Moving on, remaining still inside of our A tier, we've got Frost DKs. Frost is in a very strong spot right now and is looking to more than likely be the go-to spec for Death Knights right now for 3v3, having decent sustained damage, high burst, and of course the overpowered PvP talent Delirium. The most exciting change for Frost is the return of two-handed weapons being the go-to, giving you a lot more burst damage from Obliterate. In our previous tier list, we mentioned Frost would more than likely be S tier if it wasn't for Subrogues. Well, Frost has seen a few nerfs since then, with the damage being toned down across the board. Don't get me wrong though, Frost is still shaping up to be an incredibly powerful melee and a great complement to cleave compositions like the ever-popular Windwalker, Death Knight, or TSG. And our last edition, and still Chains of Iced inside our A tier, we've got Unholy DK. Unholy is considered a lot weaker than Frost, but still holds its own in certain compositions, being much stronger paired up with casters or in a 2v2. Unholy, similar to Frost, was held back from reaching higher levels on our tier list due to the power of certain classes heavily overshining them. Sadly, Unholy has also been at the receiving end of a few nerfs. Overall though, it will remain to be the annoying face spec with endless inter Interrupts, slows, and consistent damage paired up with Necrotic Strike and tons of Micro CC. It will definitely be stronger than it was in BFA and will have its place in certain compositions. Alright then everyone, that's going to wrap up our A tier. Before we get into our S tier and the moment you've all been waiting for, let's quickly recap on our updated tier list and look how it compares to our previous rendition. Alright. Kicking off our highest tier, we of course have Sub Rogues, previously the only class making the cut in our last rendition. Sub is without a doubt one of the strongest melee, and has received a plethora of nerfs 
including a 75% nerf to its go-to legendary, Akari's Soul Fragment, which was 100%, and now it's down to 25%. It's crazy to think that you could nerf something by 75% and it can still remain to be so good. Even despite these huge nerfs, Sub has still proven to be one of the strongest melee in the game, having high control paired up with Absurd Burst. Lice and Dice, Poisons, Rupture, and the power of the Curian Covenant paired up with Shadow Blades makes Sub just ridiculous. Undoubtedly taking down a peg or two and well justified, Sub still remains well and truly inside of our highest tier. The toning down of Sub Rogue has caused a few new contenders to climb the ranks into our S tier though, the first of which is Arms Warrior. Arms Warrior has one of the strongest kits out of any melee. Having Duel, Disarm, Rallying Cry, War Banner, Intervene, the list goes on. This overloaded utility kit combined with high consistent damage and tools like Sharpen, Blade, and Execute make them a great addition to almost any composition. As mentioned, nothing has changed with Warrior for the better since our last tier list, but the powerhouses of Sub Rogue coming down a peg has opened up more opportunities for arms to heroic leap up to our highest tier. Further, as a result of the Sub Rogue nerfs, Windwalker has managed to climb up a tier as well. Similar to Warrior, Windwalkers were placed in our A tier purely as they couldn't contend with Sub Rogue. But having some of the highest burst and consistent damage in the game, receiving some great additions like Fortifying Brew, Reverse Harm, and Invoke Zhu Wen, now all be baseline. Beyond that, now having the ability to use a two-hander for some added burst has only gone to strengthen Windwalkers from their previous BFA state. Not to mention the newly reworked Touch of Death now making it impossible to ever be low health without instantly being executed. So we've got high mobility, high damage, and great utility securing their spot in our S tier. So, with Windwalkers joining our highest tier, our complete and updated tier list for melee is now on screen. We've seen Windwalker and Arms join Sub Rogue at our highest tier, with Survival, Feral, Demon Hunter, and Assassination Rogue all climbing up the ranks. Alright then everyone, that's going to be it for this melee tier list update. For more information on all of the melee featured in this list, be sure to check out our up and coming overviews featuring all of the information you need to know to get started, ready for the release of the Shadowlands Sinful Arena Season 1. And as always, if you want to remain up to date with our Shadowlands content, be sure to like this video, ring that bell, and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.